Who that there? Well, hello, boys and girls. Hi. What a wonderful day it is today in our money-based economy. I said, who that there? Well, sit back and relax and get ready for the guy who's about to ruin everything. I'm puzzled. Uh, are you really seriously suggesting that Jesus Christ was a mushroom? Wait. Jesus was a mushroom robber. Oh, yeah. him. You are dealing with a, a secret cult. A secret society. Oh my. Welcome to Waning Interest. Welcome, welcome to the Waning Interest Podcast. Hour number 41. Unlocked Wednesday. Smallest click on the internet. July 10th, 2019. It's, it's, uh, it's Pappy Roberts' birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I'm sure you're going to have a gross try and a J. Happy birthday to you. Messing with my peoples? Stop looking at me, man. You mock me, man. Just a few of the Happy Roberts phrases. One of them, of course, you hear at the end of every hour. I've got that one pretty nailed. It, it almost sounds exactly like him. That's why I do voice shit. Because I mock, like he said. So all this funny shit that he said to me as a kid, look at me now. Sound alike for Ben Foster. <laughs> On the resume. Sound alike for Jim Carrey. <laughs> Nailed it. But who doesn't? We are smallest click on the internet. We're just laughs for your shitty or non shitty day. A whole bunch of them will come, I swear, I promise. I swear, I promise. I put with cherry and cream and punani on top. You know why? Because it's the Wednesday joke and the Wednesday radio story day. And they are exciting. They really are because, you know, you're expecting the and you get huh. Or the other way around. It's 50-50. It's two-face. Everything. Double-edged sword. But we're going to kill it. We always do. We got an hour to cram a bunch of shit in. Uh, three days a week. Oh, this is the Wednesday show that goes out to everybody. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, YouTube, TuneIn, Google Play, Laughable, Spotify, and all the other subs that I don't even know about. Podcoin, I think, is one. But, like with uh, uh, Mr. Sunday Movies when he does a video, and when he does a little thing, he says, da 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 da. But, when he does that, it's a picture, he flashes a picture of, uh, you know, one of those uh, elves or whatever, lawn elves, but bent over with his pants down, mooning. So just picture that. When I say, this is the Wednesday hour, but there's also a Monday and a Friday hour on the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash waning interest. The link should be right there, wherever you're listening from. I'm hoping, I'm guessing, I might have fucked up. But I'm pretty sure it's there. I'm going to check. Oh, I can't because I'm recording, so it's not up yet. But I'll check when I put it up. I'll make sure that everything I just said for the last 15 seconds was completely pointless. And then I'm going to do it for the next 55 minutes and 40 seconds. That was Joe Cruz you heard on the open. And you hear him on the front and the back end of the promos. Those hilarious little pieces that sucked you in and pulled you here. And brought you to the dark. Rise. So on that Patreon page... As little as two bucks a month. You want to hear more of this crazy, silly shit? Mondays, what's that? Bowling story and acting story? And then on Fridays, we get the album of the week. 
um, I think VO story and psychedelic movie slash series. It's like an echo, you know, because when you're tripping, it does feel kind of slightly like an echo or a deja vu, at least for me. And then the elves that are mooning me on my fucking shoulder and I can't see them every time as I turn my head more and more peripheral. They just keep disappearing, but I can still hear the giggling. Not at this moment. I'm talking when I be tripping, which is very infrequent. I believe in twice a year. Every six months. Bam. Or would that make it once a year, technically? If you did it, you know, like on the first of every year, and then July 31st and January 1st. Is that technically one year? Once a year? Or what? I don't know. It's kind of like the bunting thing. Not bunting. I mean, uh, the one rule in baseball that I just don't get. How? If you're at the plate and the bases are loaded, and you get walked, that means it doesn't count as an at-bat. But! You get a run batted in if you get walked with the bases loaded. How can you have a run batted in if your at-bat didn't even count? See? Nobody's thinking in baseball. They just want to hit home runs. This past uh, home run derby, well, tonight was the All-Star game. The American League won for the seventh year in a row. But that home run derby, which I didn't watch, I watched the highlights on YouTube. Whoo! Lots of home runs. They, they just destroyed records that didn't look like they'd ever get destroyed. But that's how it goes, and that's one of the bitches about getting older. I sort of fall in the middle of it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I do like sleeping much more. And I've gotten into that. I remember when my dad was around this age. I'm like, come on, let's go. Uh, like, come on. And now I'm like, eh. Come on, this. Fuck off. Get out. Just let me go. <gasps> Looks like I can squeeze in a nap. Did I tell you at Patreon, it's only two bucks a month to be a whip? Part of the Waning Interest podcast pack. It's all about my people's power. It's all about the PP. People's power podcast pack. We're all about the P. So if you're wondering, yes, it's true. The sheets are rubber. I know you were wondering. You know why? Because you're thinking of being part of the pack. Twitter and Instagram, Wayne Roberts 811. Use the hashtags. Lowercase the, uppercase W I P P, lowercase s, the whips. And What is it called again? Hashtag waning interest podcast pack. And hashtag waning interest podcast. As little as two bucks. You can pay whatever you want. But, but, as little as two bucks a month, $24 a year to be part of the pack? And get three hours a week plus bonus hours or ishes, half hours. I think it's worth it. I'm entertaining enough. I'm loud enough. I'm production value enough. I'm... Well, God damn it, there are already a bunch of whips, so I know people like me. 
Some people might get that reference bit. Some people won't. That's how it goes. Did I mention the 50-50? The double-edged sword. Two sides to everything. Everyone is Harvey Dent. Everyone is Batman. Everyone's the Joker. That's not true. That's not true. I ever tell you how I got the scars? Why so serious, son? <laughs> yeah. You see, it's all part of the plan. I wouldn't even know what to do. <laughs> These are the schemers. Oh, fuck, Heath Ledger, the Joker. It's going to be very interesting to see uh, what Joaquin Phoenix does with this Joker movie, which Todd Phillips, the writer, director, well, co-writer, director, I believe, co-writer is the director. Um, he mentioned that in an interview recently that they're not using anything from the comics, any stories from the comics that are an original story, even though they're using Arkham Asylum, Joker, Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne, Wayne fam... It's all about the Waynes, man. What the fuck? And if you're new, you will be uh, even more uh, enticed to hear that I am Batman. At least I was in 1997 when I was with the Ron and Ron show. I ended up with the, lo I, the coolest fucking, out of all the fucking nicknames. Joba Fett was pretty cool. We had a Joe, and his name, they called him Joba Fett. That was a pretty cool name. Joba Fett and Batman. We were the two, we were the two guys, well, and parody guy. <laughs> parody. <laughs> Give these pretty sharp fucking nicknames, and, he, and Fred gets parody guy. The guy that did the parody songs, of course. But Joba Fett and Batman, me and Joe, we were the, uh, the producers. We did all the producing shit. We were the whipping boys. We even had a spelling P once. It is Radio Story Day, but this isn't the radio story. But we did have this one time we had a live gig down in Key West. And Fezzi from the Ron and Ron show, the lovable gay guy, God, was he funny. He started to notice when Joe would do the paperwork stuff, he started to notice Joe's spelling was bad and his grammar. And for one of the live gigs, they decided they were, we were going to have a spelling P. Not a spelling B, a spelling P. Competition. Me and Joe. And if you got a word wrong, Fezzi was the judge and the announcer. If you got a word wrong, Ron Bennington would hit you with a stun gun. So you get stunned with a stun gun in front of the whole fucking crowd at this fucking, in this bar called Hammerheads in Key West. Two nights in a row we did shows. I get, there's a picture of me on the internet, ronandron.com. There's a picture of me falling right after, and it looks like I have a smile on my face, and I'm falling after getting hit in the neck or maybe the arm by Bennington with a stun gun. You can see it. It looks like I'm smiling. Probably because I was drunk. I barely remember that night. But! I won both nights. Bitches. I'm sorry, whippages. I won both nights. And Joe had to stand there uh, on the left side of the stage on the stairs, and about five to ten feet above him was a balloon filled with cigarette butts, curdled milk, some other things, and cat piss. I don't know how they got it, but they did. And we had a guy named Rooster, in South Florida, he was known as this big archer. 
Should talk to Joe Rogan about him. Well, when it was all over and I won, Joe had to stand there, and from across the bar, Rooster shot an arrow and blew up the fucking balloon above Joe and all that <laughs> all over his head. Did I tell you I won and didn't have to get that? But! Come to find out, Rooster was epileptic. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been just the most beautiful timing if at that moment he starts to have a fucking seizure and there I am on the other side of the stage and I get hit with the arrow for winning. <laughs> <coughs> Just because I described that and had that thought in my head, that goofy thought, I'm gonna end up dreaming that, I believe. But that is a true story, and I plan on another Wednesday getting more into that weekend at Hammerheads because there's a lot more. You think that's a goofy part of the story. There's much more. And we'll get digging deeper. Later on down the road on the Wedding Interest Podcast on a later Wednesday. Maybe. So, are you wondering why the 21 trillion, low estimate by the way, missing from the Pentagon since the, since the year 2000-ish? Isn't that the biggest story of the century so far? Are you wondering? Are you wondering? Because I'm wondering. Today, they say that that ship that they bagged uh, last week or so or two weeks ago that had over a million dollars worth of cocaine on it, owned by J.P. Morgan Chase. And the hits just keep on coming. You see the circle of life. It's all about the banks, even when it comes to the cocaine. The Banks. If you're new to the podcast, you'll find out that Wayness hates us, the Banksis. Wayness wants a world without money, along with a bunch of other weirdos. Why, you ask? Well, we have the tech. We don't need the middleman. It's fake. It's made out of debt that we're never going to be able to pay back. We're taxed to death on it. For the shit that we don't Get rid of it, you bring down corruption. Because when you get rid of money and this incentive to have power and be a cunt fuck, when in fact, because you think you're running, because in mentally you're running in a world that you think is, uh, is, is scarce, when in actuality it's it's abundant and you can have it make it in unbelievably abundant with the technology that we have if we spend it doing that instead of making weapons and blah 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 and that would bring corruption way way down there wouldn't be any reason to what do you need to steal for when you have access to everything why do you need to steal Crime goes down. All the bad shit goes way down. All that stressful shit. Stressing out because you might end up having cancer and then, oh, you don't even have any money, so how are you going to pay the bills and pay for the cancer stuff? And, oh, you don't have insurance, blah, 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 blah. Everybody, healthcare should not be for profit. Everybody should be able to go, bam. And in a smarter society that's getting rid of money, you're gonna, they're going to be healthier. Those are going to be people that have, that have changed their ways. That's what it's about. It's about evolving and stop doing this stupid shit that we used to do. Kind of like we've evolved out of drinking and smoking cigarettes 24-7. Which is why people look younger and younger as time has gone by. And the human body is getting, is doing different things. Especially for people that don't eat all the garbage, you know. 
I still, mine still looks like a 13-year-old boy, probably because I'm a junk food junkie since I was a kid and luckily don't have fucking diabetes yet. I've been pre-diabetic for many years. Have I stopped eating cookies? You're goddamn right I haven't. But I drink nothing but water. Couple coffees a week, maybe. Other than that, water. It's all I drink. I don't drink soda anymore. I used to drink a lot of it. I barely eat I barely eat bread. So that helps to keep off uh that helps to keep me from, you know, getting thick and actually having the body of a man instead of a twelve year old boy. But I like it, because as I get older, you know, um, I I won't have that old, you know what I'm saying? It's going to work. Ugh. It's going to have like a little Benjamin Button sort of feel to it, maybe. But I might not get any older. Who knows? I could drop dead right now. You thought I dropped dead, didn't you? That's one of my favorite parts of uh, the first Ace Ventura when he's on the phone with Courtney Cox and he's talking to her and then all of a sudden he just stops talking and she's like, Ace, Ace. You thought I hung up, didn't you? And he had this big smile on his face. It was this cute thing because they had just fucked. God, I love that movie. Saddlebags. I don't smoke. It's a disgusting habit. God, I love that fucking movie. I gotta watch it again. It's been a while. I think that one, see, I think the number on Arthur is 98 views. Ace Ventura's gotta be around 65-ish. Do you know the dolphin? Anyway, you know what? I'm thinking, hoping, praying, religiously jerking off at the thought of a fight club type worldwide group um, to start doing many non-violent, non-violent things to bring down the system. You know that money shit that I hate? Anonymous is dead, and, you know, the gay community has always owned it anyway. <laughs> that joke would have killed in a gay bar. That's why it's killing now, because this is part of a gay, this is kind of a gay bar, you know what I'm saying? Do you hear the music? Do you hear the porn? Seriously, do you hear it? I got it as low as I can without you, thinking you, I, thinking that you might hear it. You know what I mean? I, is it low enough? Yeah, it's low enough. But wouldn't that be great? Go back and watch Fight Club if you haven't in a while. And, and go, oh my God, a lot of you, and I still do it every time I watch it, there's still, a, there's, an, there's something new. And it's like, how the fuck did I miss that? How was I that much of a, always been kind of a rebel? But how did I not see the correlations back then? Oh, I was a big drinker. My brain was a little soaked. Because goddamn, when I quit drinking in 05, wow, did this thing become a sponge again. And that's where I went, oh, that's why I missed all that shit. Duh, duh. And that's such a big hit and everything. You think, I think it's going to happen. Well, and I get the idea because somebody, what, uh, what was the story I saw? Somebody, some group, hung a banner outside of, was it a bank or some big corporate, corporate building? And first I was like, how the fuck were they able to do that? But pretty cool. Shit like that, nonviolent stuff where <clears throat> thankfully people are going to more independent news, like I tell everybody, like Jimmy Dore, uh, Abby Martin, uh, Redacted Tonight, and others. There's many, many others. Some worse than others. I believe the ones that I just mentioned are almost always, they're, they're, they're right there at the truth. 
so often their batting average is they should have been in the All-Star game tonight. Put it that way, okay? Jimmy Dore should have been wearing a Red Sox fucking uniform. No, Cubs. He's from Chicago. Lee Camp should have been wearing a, uh, well, he's in, he lives in D.C., so he would uh, obviously be wearing a Washington Generals. <laughs> Just kidding. I know who they are. And Abby, obviously Dodgers because she lives here. But there were too many Dodgers. They gave up most of the runs. Sorry. True. I believe was Xander Bogarts had from the Red Sox had one of the RBIs, one of the four runs he hit. He knocked in one of the four runs of the American League. So, yeah, it's Red Sox all the way. That's what I'm saying. But I really don't care anymore. I love for baseball, but I just want to see good baseball. But it's so fucking corporate. All this stuff is so corporate and horseshit. Now I, I don't really give a flying fuck who wins. Just want to see good sports without flopping. Lady soccer is better to watch than men's soccer. They're good. And they don't flop like the guys. It's so pathetic to watch those motherfuckers flopping around like that. And you almost never see that in hockey. You ain't got a chance to flop, really. It's so rare you see a flop in hockey. It's fucking crazy. Speaking of which, Rip Torn is dead. I know there's no correlation, but if I hadn't explained it, it would have been funnier. Artie. From Larry Sanders and many, many other great characters. That guy was so awesome. Such a fucking pro. Talk about a version of work hard, play hard. I hate that phrase. It's so cliche and, you know, is Tinder and Bumble. If that was, if that phrase was in, some, in, in, in somebody's profile, she went whoop to the left. If you wrote, if you had work hard, play hard in your profile, uh, that's not somebody I want to converse with. If you use that fucking phrase at this in this age, I tell you, I'm single. So Rip Torn is dead. I immediately posted from YouTube uh, a little compilation that somebody put together of the bet. It's called the Best of Artie Part One, but I didn't see a Part Two. A whole bunch of funny clips from the Larry Sanders show. Him and Hank. Him, Gary Shant. Oh, my God, that show is so brilliant. If you've never watched the Larry Sanders show, and there is still a lot of people that never saw it, you have to do yourself a favor. If it wasn't for that show, there'd be no Modern Family. There wouldn't be Arrested Development. That's where, it's, that's where it really started. The Office... Heavily in influenced by the Larry Sanders show. <laughs> He's a gay. What? He's a gay. What are you, Italian? Larry, I'm sorry. I misheard you and then I misspoke. Phil, the monologue was weak. No, it was a shit crowd, Larry. No, it was a, the monologue was weak. It was early Conan. <laughs> Rip Torn. One of the greatest character actors ever. And when I say, yeah, work hard, play hard, if you didn't, we weren't aware, he was uh, at one time uh, trying to break into a bank hammered off his ass and probably on something else and then act and then accidentally went into somebody else's home you know one of those Robert Downey Jr. things where he went into the wrong home all fucked up and then he worked hard because everything he did fucking murdered everything he did you know, there's no rip torn performance where you go eh whatever and they're all he was always stole Every fucking moment he was, he owned every moment and you could say basically stole every fucking scene he ever did. 
So, rip, rip. Rip. God damn it. Thank you for all the laughs. All these funny people dying is starting to really piss me off and scare the shit out of me. Why? Because I'm a funny fuck. Right? Right? Right. So last week I uh, told the story of my senior prom and how innocent it was. And then how, and then Friday I updated that because I meant to tell the, the, I meant to read the emails back and forth uh, for the reason why I told the story between me and Kate. And then on Friday, with that update, I remind, remembered, uh, she reminded me when in the emails, I remember another story of us, which was just a few weeks later at a party where she then said that, you know, because I didn't do anything, it was innocent. I thought we were just friends and I was too afraid to uh, make a move. And I had no idea that she actually had a crush on me until she told me in front of a bunch of people while we're hammered and everybody laughed at me and I made it funny. They didn't laugh at me. They laughed at the story and what was happening. It was a very funny moment. Why are you telling me now? Well, I remembered another story. Our 10-year reunion, which ended up being 11 and a half. Because normally you have it you know, in the summertime, that same year, that 10th year of that 10-year anniversary. Well, we had it the 11-year anniversary at Thanksgiving. There were a lot of people. It wasn't a big class. It was 116 of us that graduated. And a big chunk don't live there anymore, so they figured a bunch of people would be back for Thanksgiving. That's what we did. And it, I believe it happened just because of... What was it from? There was a website back in the day high school reunion or I, I, what the hell. There was a website where you could log in and you could put in and, and uh, your school was on the list and, you know, some people were there and some people weren't. <clears throat> I cannot remember the fucking name of that site. But I signed up there and there was like seven people on there. And Kate was one of them. And we emailed a couple times. This is back in, what, 2000-ish or 99. High school something dot com. High school. I can't remember. Anyway, well, in the emails back and forth with her and a couple other people, we're like, what's going on? Is there going to be a reunion? I have no idea. I'm in Florida. I have no idea. I wasn't one of the part of the class, part of the people that put shit together and whatever they were called. I was, I, what's it got? I, anyway, Bam. Within a couple of months or so, uh, it was planned and everything. Well, get this. Kate, I'm in Florida, South Florida. My uh, not wife yet is pregnant with my our daughter. It's Thanksgiving, year 2000. Kate lives in, I believe it was South Carolina. So... We're flying, and we have to go from Fort, we're from Fort Lauderdale to, I think it was Cincinnati, and then to Portland, Maine. At the time, I was not a good flyer. I used to be a good flyer as a kid, flying back and forth from uh, Northern Virginia to Maine a bunch, me and my sister. Didn't bother me. Didn't bother me flying all the way to Australia after I graduated high school. The flight back, the flights back from Australia. They stressed me out so fucking bad, I didn't ever want to fly again. First time when I moved to Florida, first time I went back to Maine, I took the goddamn train. Oh, that sucked. That was a long trip. Very uncomfortable. I fell asleep one night in the bar car. Hammond. Budweiser. 
woke up with a serious headache. It wasn't traveling with any ibuprofen. Ooh, trains. But anyways, I had started flying again uh, with my future wife. We went on a few trips. But what I had done was a friend of mine had a Xanax prescription and I would borrow a couple of Xanax and I would have a few drinks. So I have a Xanax, bunch of drinks on the plane, but I pee most of them out. So when we get to Cincinnati, I'm not hammered or anything. But, but, did you see the elf? I uh, definitely wanted to have a cigarette. Even though my stress was down from the Xanax and the booze, cigarette would help. And in Cincinnati, they had this smoking section where it was like this big room glassed in, and it was, it was kind of funny looking. Well, we land, get off the plane. I feel kind of weird. I feel something strange. And I'm, some part of it's like something familiar. And on the other hand, it's... Am I having a sense that we shouldn't get on the next plane? What the hell? Something, it, something was weird. Still remember it to this day. Something felt strange. Anyway, I let my, my uh, stepson and her, they stayed, uh, got something to eat right there by the, by the terminal. I went to the smoking place, sucked down a couple of cigarettes, came back, still had that feeling, like, what's going on? Anyway, get on the plane. I can't wait till we're in the air and, and cruising altitude where we can go to the bathroom because I got to get rid of some of this vodka. Finally get up there. Take my seatbelt off, get up, start heading to the back of the plane, which is not many people on it. And who is sitting like nine rows behind us, smiling at me as I'm heading to the bathroom? Kate! That's why I felt I knew she was there. And yes, I've repeated this. I've told the story many times to people who think I'm fucking crazy. They might be right. But I felt it. Call me crazy. Call me whatever. Call me Sister Sally Sarah. I don't care. I felt it. It made sense. But then I went to the bathroom. I went, hey, well, I got to pee. I'll be right back. And then I'm in the bathroom trying to pee. And I've been holding it so long, it's hard to finally get it going. And then I'm going, wait a minute. Does this mean the plane's going to crash? And then when it didn't, I went, ah, but there it was. We'll never forget that. I felt that shit. And this is before I was a tripper, man. So, you know. Maybe I am the chosen one. Everybody is Neo. A.K.A. One. But if you're a whip, you already knew that. Because I say it at the end of every hour. Right? Right. Hey, we haven't talked all night. Nope. Has it been one take, two? Nope. Friday or Monday, there was a lot of take twos. <coughs> take two? Yes. Friday or Monday, there was a bunch of take twos. And I listened back and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hey, time to move on to homelessness, rats. You know, there are 12 million rats in Los Angeles now, and it's mostly due to the homelessness problem that we have, these tent cities and all that shit. All kinds of sickness, typhus, was it typhus? Plague, measles, TB, typhoid fever, others. There is July 10th, over a thousand dead halfway through the year, dead homeless people. We got to do something. Of course, I'm saying this on the Wednesday one when the, the, where I don't have a smaller amount of people uh, that has a chance to listen to it being locked hours. But I shared something. Dr. Drew went over it on his uh, Dr. Drew After Dark 
There's a little clip that was on YouTube. It got recommended to me because because uh, it's hooked to the your mom's <clears throat> excuse me your mom's house podcast. Uh, Tom Segura and Christina Pazitsky. They share a studio and they do a bunch of stuff. And because I have watched their stuff, I get recommended uh, the Dr. Drew things. And we, he went over it. And we all know there's a problem. Money. It's not that there's not enough. It's the way that it's done and all the corruption and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, there are so many things that are connected to this homelessness problem. So many, it's so nuanced, but at the core, of course, is money. And there's so many different reasons do not justify what, we're the, what the fuck is happening. And I feel it because I, right, I look outside my back window and there's somebody right now that's taken, taken some of the cardboard boxes from the big five and they're right at the foot of the steps covering themselves with a bunch of that cardboard. They were just doing it before I started recording. This is getting nuts. And there's no reason for it. We live in a world of abundance. Well, we ain't some of those people there on drugs. Yeah, well, they're probably on drugs because they said fuck it because of all the bullshit that they put up with and they, all the problems that they, you know, the stresses and all the stuff. You get to a point where you just say, fuck this. I get it. Now, I'm not too far away myself. People, I love it when people think that I'm, I, uh, have no money worries. <laughs> if they only knew. Did I mention the Patreon page? Anyway. I mean, what it is that we do, I don't know. I'm just trying to use a moment where who knows could be listening And one of the reasons that they were listening maybe was to hear that and then to move on and then maybe it's the perfect person to go, you know what, bam, bam. Or just a bunch of people. That, this, it, we have so many empty homes. And who puts it? The banks are connected to the whole thing anyway, of course, as we know. And... Why do we have a heroin problem? Well, we've only been uh, uh, guarding the poppy fields in Afghanistan since 2001. The Taliban or drug dealer? No, the Taliban tried to get rid of that shit. That's why we're over there. Big pharma, boom. Heroin, boom. Kind of like the problem in the 70s from the Vietnam War when they were shipping it back from Vietnam. The same fucking thing. Inside dead bodies, inside caskets. I'm veering off the problem, but, but, a lot of those homeless are veterans. All that money that gets spent in the military industrial complex, they should be more than well taken care of. Anybody who's in the service. All that fucking money? Was it Pentagon? No, look, we only. Uh, what did Iron mention the uh, rough, rough, low, low estimate of 21 million, 21 trillion since the year 2000. Missing. I think they can be more than taken care of. Moving on. Stranger Things, one word, spores. Notice? Notice the show feels like deja vu to most people. For different reasons. Right back to the spores. And very well done to do that shit, you know. Did they actually say gag me with a spoon in season three? In this season three? <laughs> and then there's Hopper with the fucking Hawaiian shirt. Looks like Hoffman, my old boss from radio, Mark Hoffman. Mark Hoffman, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Hoffman. This is Vic Prowl, the radio psychic. Mark Hoffman's in the, in the studio.
that was a funny little post. I, was, I had to post it and show everybody, you know, a bunch, and had to tag a bunch of uh, people I used to work with in radio with Mark Hoffman. And, Who does this remind you of? And a couple of people got it wrong, and I'm like, what is going on? How could you get this wrong? And then the third course, number three, bam, got it. And my stroke was avoided. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Wednesday joke on the Waning Interest Podcast. The Wednesday joke on the Waning Interest Podcast. Where I pull one off, where I pull out, uh, I, like, I, I like to share the original shit that I wrote for stand-up comedy when I was first going to open mics back in 2014. And that's where this comes from. This actually comes from June of 2014. June 2nd. That was the last date on it. That's when I sent it to myself? Yeah. And it's, you know, it's the 10th. It's my dad's birthday, so you know what? I'm throwing two jokes at you. Smoke cigarettes, menthols, to be specific. So, of course, a lot of people assume that I'm black. Number two? Number two. Like all of us, uh, I've got some crazy neighbors. Some of mine make me really paranoid. The other night, a couple of them were banging on my door at 3 a.m., scared the hell out of me. Luckily, I had company, an eight ball of cocaine, and my drums. Bubba Kush solved that one. And those are the Wednesday jokes of the Waiting Interest Podcast. The really oh types shit garbage. What? I don't know. I went with it, though. Yeah, you did. Anyway, those are two of the original funnies that I scribbled together back in 2014 when I first started going to open mics to make a complete ass out of myself and feel normal. Because it was nothing different from any other time of the day. I was just holding a microphone in my hand. And some people said, hey, some of those are kind of funny. I went, yeah, maybe I should keep doing it. And then I went, I'd do like four or five open mics. And then I wouldn't do it for two, three months. Then I'd go back and do four or five more. And then I wouldn't do shit for a couple of months. And then I went, but I was doing a play at the Santa Monica Playhouse. And in the back, there was this thing that said uh, Greg Dean comedy class or stand-up comedy class thing. It was a, the ripped-off cover page of some propaganda, if you will. And I went to the, the owners of the theater, and I said, what the fuck is this shit? And they said, he teaches a class here. And I went, oh, it's here. No shit, that's cool. And then they said, well. And uh, I did the play for six months. We ran for six months. And because the play was a comedy, I was getting more into, I, I was enjoying making people laugh on stage. And I went, you know what? I think I'm going to do this just for more discipline and get more I know a lot of comics shit on comedy classes or whatever. I was like, ah, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Because <clears throat> I, could, I could use it. So I took Greg Dean's class. And because of that, I had more discipline. I wrote 
better. Start, the joke started to get better. And some of the stuff that I tell on these Wednesday hours, the Wednesday joke, actually still are jokes of mine, but they've been done, they've, they've been worked into uh, something better. Maybe a slice, maybe the whole thing, maybe it turned into something else, whatever. But the class helped, and that got me my first time on stage at the Hollywood Improv on Melrose. And from there, it was all downhill. Because, uh, yeah, it was, that was 2000, that was 2016. And... A few months later, July, yeah, coming up on the date. It's almost been three years since I busted my foot. And it didn't, didn't do stand-up for a year. Although I did go to friends' shows. I did support some friends still. But I was like, this whole thing with the crutches and them having to get through to the stage and through all the shit. Fuck this shit. I'd rather just hang in the back with my foot in the air and laugh. Hopefully. That was a bitch of a year. I got really tired of that goddamn boot. Speaking of which, it's time for the Wednesday Radio Story. The Wednesday Radio Story. Yeah. Speaking of which, they have nothing to do with each I know. That's part of the... Th <laughs> Why you gotta ruin my shit? Because, oh... So, I've mentioned before that one of the when I first got into radio in 1994, one of the people who trained me on the on the board to be a, a board op or technical director, whatever you want to call it, it's been just different names. Some some people say engineer, but engineer to me are the people who would fucking put the shit together and fix it. But some people call board ops engineers. It depends on what city you're in. It's yeah, yeah, you gotta learn. Like, wait, I thought this, and that, and it's like in bowling where they're changing. It used to be a hook. Now they're calling it curve, and I'm just, I can't get used to it. Curve is in baseball. Bowling, it's hook the ball, not curve the ball. It just sounds doesn't sound right. I've been saying hook the ball since I was a kid, or hearing hook the ball because I grew up in bowling centers. Now they're saying it. It, it makes no sense. Anyway, Mike Bohan, another R.I.P. My friend. He was blind. And one of the funniest fucking people you will ever meet. You... Take two? Sure. He was blind. And one of the funniest people you ever met. And handsy. I don't know why. Anyway. We got to be really good friends and spent uh, many holidays together. Um, at one point, my, uh, my roommate who also worked at the radio station. The three of us would do shopping together, you know, Christmas and do stuff, and sometimes some of the other holidays. And one Christmas, you know, Mike was blind. His daughter was... <laughs> Take two again? Yes. Starting to fall apart. Wheels are coming off. Yep. Mike was blind. His wife is blind. She's still here with us. His three kids... They can see plain as day. <laughs> but David, my roommate, and I take Mike Christmas shopping to buy, you know, buy them all, all them gifts or whatever. But all he got that night was stuff for his wife, who is blind. And we know this. We've all known each other for years. This is what, I think this might have been the year 1999. So I've known Mike since 19... I've known him for five years or whatever. David, same, about the same. We go shopping. We were at a brand... Was it Brands Mart? Or was it... No, it was Best Buy. And Mike got a bunch of stuff. And I mean, it was a pile of stuff. There was a receiver. There was a stereo thing. There were some speakers. There was a, a whole bunch of shit we were, that we lugged around. We lugged to the car. But... As we're at the checkout, David says to me, oh, I'll, you want to go out and smoke a cigarette? I'll, I'll help him with, uh, with uh, taking care of this shit. Oh, no problem. Cool, thanks. I step out. I'm having a cigarette. Just like a minute later, 
David's standing beside me going, yeah, man, oof, that place is too packed. I'm like, dude, where's Mike? Oh, shit. He turned around, we both turned around, and there's Mike, blind guy, holding all this fucking stuff in his arms at the door, what, waiting for somebody to open it. It's like, these people fucking put all that shit in the blind man's arms and let him start, what? Uh, and David forgot, and it was fucking hilarious. Well, then we put the shit in the car, and David does, isn't even a drinker or a smoker. Cigarettes, yes, but not weed. So he had no excuse for this. Put the shit in the car. We go to take take Mike home. We're getting out of the car. And remember, all the gifts, the other thing that Mike bought was for his wife. We're getting out of the car, and David goes, you know, uh, Mike, you want to just uh, leave all the stuff in the car so Lidge don't see it? And there's this awkward silence, and I was like, is he kidding? And I look at Mike, and Mike's kind of, all of a sudden, this grin starts to grow on his face. And then I look over at David, and David's looking at us going, what? And then all of a sudden, it hits him. Oh, Jesus, I forgot. Lidge is blind, like she's going to know what the fuck is in the box. Yeah, I could have told that story a bit better. But that's not the story I actually wanted to tell. When Phil Hendry, when, uh, in 1996... Uh, there was, uh, was it Rice, Jimmy Rice, a kid that had been kidnapped uh, back in, in South Florida. Whatever. And Phil ended up putting these uh, to raise money for the foundation. The, I believe it was the Jimmy Rice Foundation. Did some golf tournaments, celebrity golf tournaments. And he did the first one and I helped out and it was a blast. And I basically drove one of the golf cart, the drink carts and Stopped at greens and teas and everybody need refreshments, you know, drove around and getting hammered myself. Well, when we know that we got sold and then Phil's only got a few months left and he's going to go leave him back to California, he decides to have, before he leaves, to put on another uh, golf tournament. And Mike didn't want to miss this one. He had missed the first one. And I went, no problem. You're coming with me. You can sit in the golf cart with me and I drive around. You can just, you know, you're with me the whole time which we did, and we had a blast, and of course, he's hammered. Well, then another, one of the other, uh, one of our other co-workers was there. He showed up, and he wanted to hang out with us for a bit. We're getting drunk, smoking a bit of weed. This was, what, 1996? And at one point, we decide, dude, let's let Mike drive the cart. Mike, you want to drive the cart? Yeah, buddy. So he sat there, and on, I was on one side, and Steve was on the other, and we basically uh, just made sure with the, you know, we grab any time to stay straight, keep it straight. You know, we, we just talked him through it, and it didn't matter. We were going over these hills. It looked like we were doing fucking a scene from Jackass. And what made it perfect was as we're driving around at this one point, we all had to piss. And that's what we were doing. We were letting him drive to the restroom bunker that we were going to. But we ended up driving right towards one of the fucking ponds. Because we were laughing so fucking hard, it was hard to keep Mike on the road, and, right? And, and, and to make sure that we had a hold of the wheel when we needed to, to fix him up and everything. And all of a sudden, boom! Right in front of one of the ponds, they've got these big-ass weeds that stick out. I can't remember what they're called, but there was like a wall of them. And we had, bam, just ran right into them and stopped the cart. And Mike went, oh, good, I'll piss right here. And he did. Whipped it out right there in front of the pond. Mike and I, or Steve and I, are fucking almost pissing our pants, but we didn't do that. We let him pit, finish, and then we... We drove and got to the restroom thing and were able to pee. And oh, we had a great story to tell. And then I think what we did after that was uh, proceeded to get more drunk. And that's the Wednesday radio story all about Michael Bohan, Mr. Bohan. R.I.P. I I miss that motherfucker. Yeah, buddy. Watch Redacted tonight, Jimmy Dore Show, Kim Iverson, Kyle Kalinsky, Abby Martin. Look for yourself. I'm just here to be a fun babbling lecture. Rur, 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 rur. Remember, we're all Neo, a.k.a. One. Sorry we ran long. Had to bump comedian David Tell. Thanks, Gary.
Daddy loves you. Stop looking at me, man.